coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. If God said it, I believe it. That settles it. I'm going to take what God has given to me, irrespective of the giants, irrespective of the oppositions, irrespective of any form of uh, discouragement. You know, many people give up the fight even before the fight starts. <laughs> Partners run with the vision, partners share in the provision. We invite you to become our partner today. Visit www.freshdew.tv or call plus 234-700-3737-4339 for details. Hello, I'm Pastor Kichi Ene and welcome to Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh Tea, Pastor Shala Kimwali and myself will continue our message series, Living, Living in, in Victory, Victory, Part 12. 12, 12. Okay. So our texts have, have been 1 John 5, 4 and 1 John 4, 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. That's 1 John 5, 4. Mm -hmm. And 1 John 4, 4, you are of God, little children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And we, when we started out, we said that there are five things we will be looking at in the course of this series that will enable us to live in victory that God has given to us. The first thing is to accept you are coming from victory. Mm -hmm. Number two, appreciate your new or your heavenly birth. 
Number three, acknowledge the indwelling of the greater one. And in the last episode, we started with number four, two or two episodes, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, <laughs> before now. And that is the fourth point is adopt the overcomer's disposition. I guess we're finishing that today. We're finishing that today. Mm -hmm. We've looked at two points under that. Firstly, to live in victory, your disposition is indispensable. Number two, renewing our minds gives us a disposition of victory. Mm. And so still taking that thought home, we want to look at the third thought under this, which is refuse the discouraging report of the world. Wow. Refuse the report of the world, which more often than not is discouraging. And uh, the world wants us, we saw this in the last part, that the world wants to put us in a mold of failure and defeat, and defeat by the things that are reported to us on a daily basis. And this is why Jesus said, take heed how you hear and what, what you, you hear. hear. You know, it's good to hear the news, but just, if, in fact, if you don't need to hear it, don't listen to it. Because on a constant basis, I don't know when last I put on the news, and the majority of the news was positive. Any of the news? Yes. It's, it's, even on social media, virtually everything that's coming is, like we said last time, has been poisoned and affected by the spirit of the age, the spirit of the world. So the world is constantly reporting things that will, you know, give us a weaken report. You. Weaken you. and affect you. And, you know, you will not be able to take what belongs to you. And if we didn't have the word of God, we would have reason to be discouraged and depressed. I can tell you that. Look at what Jesus said in John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you. That is his word. In other words, if you start reading from John 14, even to John 17, Jesus said some very powerful, life-changing things. And he said, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But he goes on, but be of good cheer. What? For what reason, Jesus? I have overcome the world. We looked at this in another translation earlier on. He said, I have already uh, I've come out with a permanent victory over the world. So Jesus tells us that we have overcome the world. And because of this, we can be of good cheer. Now, that to be of good cheer simply means to be courageous. To be courageous. We looked at, uh, who was it that we saw had a bold disposition about him? Caleb had a bold disposition about him. And that's the same kind of thing Jesus is telling us to have, to have that heart of courage. And Je why did Jesus say, be of good cheer? I have overcome the world. Because he told us to be encouraged because there would be reasons, there would be things that on a day-to-day -day basis would like to discourage us mm -hmm. from the natural standpoint. And Jesus here gives us one reason why we should be, why we should never be discouraged, why we, should, uh, why we shouldn't be discouraged. And that reason is this. He said, I have, I have overcome, overcome the world. I have gotten a permanent victory. Faith accomplished. Faith accomplished. What's the other one you use? Tetelestai. <laughs> okay, Tetelestai. <laughs> it is finished. I have overcome the world. Now, this singular reason, get this child of God, this singular reason that Jesus gives is overwhelming. And every other reason for not overcoming therefore becomes a lame excuse for failure. Wow. Should I say that again? Please do. He tells us, I have overcome. And this singular reason is overwhelming. And every other reason for not overcoming becomes a lame excuse for failure. Mm. I can't overcome because I was born on the wrong sides of the tracks. Mm. You know, I can't overcome because I must, I must accept my status quo because this is the kind of family I was born into. Oh, I can't overcome because I'm from this part of the world. There if I went, there's family. a curse in my family. We have generational curses or near success syndrome and all these it's lies rubbish. belched out from the, um, from the very <laughs> bottom of hell, from the devil himself. And you hear Christians repeating that. Yeah. No, no. Jesus just tells you, I have overcome the world. Five and like words. we, five words. And like we said, he's, we, by faith, we hooked up with his victory. Whatever is born of Whatever God. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Therefore, any reason you give 
why you're not succeeding or why the world is overcoming you and you're not prevailing is at best a lame excuse for failure. I don't know about you. If Jesus said he has overcome the world and he has delivered that victory to me, then what I hear Jesus say is that, Shola, you have no reason to be discouraged. The oppositions will be there. But this singular reason, you may start listing 10 reasons on all the fingers of your hands, but Jesus just gives you one. And that one reason swallows it's all up encompassing. and it's all in, it take, covers everything. I have overcome the world. And why it's important to look at this and to understand this reason not to be discouraged and refuse the discouraging report of the world is because perhaps the first place the enemy tries to chip at in your life when things look discouraging uh, is our resolve and our will. He aims to eat our determination because like we said, you know, if you're going to enjoy this victory, you must have that disposition. Let's pray this. You must have that spirit of Caleb mm -hmm. that said, I'm going to take this. Do you think Caleb had reasons to be discouraged? From the natural standpoint, did he see the same thing? Yes. Or when Elisha, when Gehazi reported, oh, look at, the, we are done for. Look at the mountains. I mean, they, they've come for us. And El e Elisha was as cool as they come, as cool and composed as cucumber. <laughs> and, he's, and he says, no, those are with us are more than with them. Lord, open his, Lord eyes. open his eyes. It means that Elisha knew something. If Elisha didn't know something, he could have been discouraged. If David did not know that the Lord was with him and so forth, he could have been discouraged. So, if you don't have these promises of God, there's reason for to be discouraged. And the enemy, that's the first place he begins to walk on, is that resolve. And when this comes in, there's a loss of hope. There's despondency. And along with that despondency and loss of hope is a loss of strength. You just, you just get weakened. You just get, lethargy. you know, lethargic and you just kind of like give up and like, well, ah, what's the point? What's the, that's, there you go. What's, so the, what's point? the point? What, what's, the, what's the point? What can I do? Let me and, eat it with my son and die. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. It's the yeah. last thing I've got. Let me just... Yeah. There's no point fighting. Yes. We've, we've read uh, Psalm 27, 13 on some occasions in this series. Let's start from 13 and go to 14. It says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I see, say on the Lord. So you see there, he's saying, be of good courage. And when you are of good courage, you see there's a connection. What will happen to your heart? You will be strengthened. Your resolve will be firm. You say, no, God, if God promised it, that I be, if God said it, I believe it, that settles it. I'm going to take what God has given to me, irrespective of the giants, irrespective of the oppositions, irrespective of any form of uh, discouragement. You know, many people give up the fight even before the fight starts. That's true. I mean, and, it, and so, you know, in a way, they're sim it's similar to a, they get intimidated because they don't know. The fight. Even yes, by the, the thought of the fight, yeah. you know, because they don't see themselves properly. They see themselves in in themselves, rather than seeing themselves in Christ and the victory that he gave to them, you know? I mean, they step into, it's like a wrestler who, I mean, who is small and steps into the ring, sees the opponent, and sees the opponent, feels the opponent is so big and refuses to step into, into, into the ring. They've been intimidated. They've been discouraged. And I've watched some wrestling matches. You know, the race is not to the, uh, to the swift. <laughs> yeah, I know normally in physical might, you know, somebody who is bigger would normally beat. But even in wrestling, there is tact. There is skill. And I've seen some midgets take down some giants, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak, in the wrestling ring. Some it's David's not... take down some Goliath. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Good point you make. Yeah. How about David seeing Goliath and running away? He wasn't discouraged. He ran towards he him. Ran towards him. He oh, ran he towards him God. and he <laughs> defeated him. Look at Colossians 1.14. The, Colossians 1.14, strengthened with 11. all, sorry, Colossians 1.11, thank you. Colossians 1.11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. This is resurrection power. Look at this, for, that word for in the Greek is the word unto or into, all patience, long-suffering with joyfulness. I particularly like the word patience. In other words, when the Spirit of God strengthens our inner man, strengthens our heart, right, 
it results in patience. The, and what is patience? Patience is not okay. Whatever will be, will be. I will just bear suffer this, through suffer it. through it. No, patience is first of all knowing that the victory is there. Victory is done. And then you're standing your ground. Having done all. Or having done all, you stand. Knowing that the victory is certainly yours. And it's the Spirit of God that gives you that strength that causes you to be encouraged and causes you to keep the, the sun of hope shining, letting you know that not only that victory will come, but by faith, victory is here, right here glory, glory, and right now. Glory, glory. And that's glory. what the Spirit of God glory, does. Glory, so glory. when we are discouraged, unfortunately, what happens when people are discouraged, they become dispirited, they can't go and take what belongs to them, and they just give up. So while the enemy and they lose has, their inheritance. And they lose, like the, like, like, like the children of Israel. Ten you know, spies. Ten God. spies. You know, God promised them the land, but they didn't get it. Of, be, not because God didn't give it to them. <laughs> not because it wasn't his will, but because they were disco discouraged. And sometimes, let's say something here. This discouragement, we talked about the world, you know, but it's terrible when the spirit of the world gets into believers they are what somebody calls unbelieving believers, and they peddle unbelief. When it's one of the saddest things. As their gospel. I said, thank that's good. <laughs> <laughs> as their message. And they discourage other believers. I mean, I mean, like a brother telling someone, I'm trusting God for this healing, I'm trusting God for this job. I uh, say, uh, healing. You, you, hmm, hmm, healing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Healing ended with the apostles, <laughs> in the answer of the apostles. Yeah, or somebody saying, well, I'm trusting God for a job, for a breakthrough, for an increase. Say, so is that what you are interested in? What... Hmm. Do you know how long I've been out of job? That kind of thing. And that's a, a, a note of caution here, is that be careful who you share yeah. your, your, your faith projects yeah. and your desires with. Good point. So, like, I, I just want to give out my car. Yes. The Spirit of God ministered right. to me to give the right. man of God my only car. Wow. Give the man of God your only car. Yeah. Men of God have cars. So yeah. You will trek for the rest of your life. Oh. If, you, if the man of God wants a car, he should buy it from the church offering. If you, uh, he should buy it. You want to do that. And all those kind of discouragements, and that's where it becomes subtle. So while the enemy attacks our courage, look at this, God works on building it up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God works on building it Amen. up. And even when you are at that point where you're, dis where you're getting discouraged, and listen, we are all tempted oh, to yeah. be discouraged. Yeah. No matter how great a man of faith, a woman of faith you are, times come once in a while where it just, you're like, oh, I mean, let me just give up. What, what's, what's, what, what's the, why? What 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 word did you use there? What what's the bother? What's the point? What's the point? Please, and then I can tell you the God I know, virtually every time will just come to you, giving you an encouraging yeah, word. Rise just up on the rise up on the inside of you. The greater one will rise up. Counsel will rise up. Direction will rise up. He will send somebody. But so, the onus is still on you. It's to still listen. it's on you to listen and to know that this is God speaking mm. and receive that mm. help. When Joshua was about to take the land of Israel, this was the land where the spies were intimidated to go to take. Joshua himself was one of those spies. Look at what happens in Joshua 1, what we read in Joshua 1, 5 to 9. God spent some time speaking to Joshua to be of good courage. And you're going to, we'll see the number of times God said this between verse 5 to 9. Within a space of five verses, you'll notice how many times God told him this. From verse 5, it says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. What a precious promise. Be strong and of good courage. For, this, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong. And very courageous True. that you may be, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Mm. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Verse say, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Mm. He said it three times. Mm. In a space of five 
times. And notice, notice the connection between strength and courage. Verse 6, be strong and of, and of good courage. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Mm. Then in verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. God told him to be strong and of good courage, Pastor, three times. Wow. And God did this because he was going to enter that land yeah. because there would be things that would want to intimidate him, things that would want to bully him into silence and not make his confession of faith. But God knowing that that was going to come, why would, did God tell him be strong and of a good courage? And then even in point, he says, be strong of good courage. Do not be afraid. Don't let fear come in. Because once, you are, once you're not strengthened and once you're discouraged, fear comes, fear in. comes in and everything that goes on that turf. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Be strong enough for good courage. Amen. Only be very courageous. Yeah. And one of the things that shows when, and that's the last thing I want to just dance with here, yes. when you are courageous, you actually end up counting, counting it all joy. joy. Amen. And that's, that, that's, that is the disposition Vision of a winner. Of a winner. Mm -hmm. That's the attitude we're talking about, child mm -hmm. of God. In the midst of right. despair, in the midst of discouragement, you mm -hmm. count it all joy. You hear believers say all things work together, Mm. For my good, all, mm. and they, they refer to when bad things yeah. happen. To, well, all things, no, 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 no. Mm. All things work together for your good, because you are called oh. according to His purpose, yeah. and you know it. That, yeah, and you know it. Yeah, I don't want to even go to the verses before that. Yeah. And yeah. you know it. So when you are courageous, you will count it all joy. Mm -hmm. You will have a disposition of praise. That's good. An attitude of joy, joy. and thanksgiving. Amen. Look at what James one two to three says. My brethren. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, mm -hmm. knowing, that's mm -hmm. the key, mm -hmm. Pastor yeah. knowing that the testing, testing. of your faith yeah. produces patience. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 7, 4, great is my boldness, I like wow. this, of speech towards you. Amen. Great is my boasting on your behalf. I am filled Field. with comfort. <laughs> I am exceedingly <laughs> joyful in oh. all our wow. tribulation. Wow, what is that? That is that is crazy. <laughs> Second Corinthians 12, 9 to 10. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, mm. most, most gladly wow. I will rather boast <laughs> in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. For when I am weak, then I, I am strong. I mean, this is really counterintuitive. Hmm. This really doesn't make sense, yeah. actually. But it makes spirit. Amen. It makes victory. Faith. It makes attitude. Look at these words. Various trials count all joy. Hmm. How, does that, how does that make sense? Tribulation, exceedingly joy. Jo not just when joyful. When last were you, first of all, <laughs> when last did you smile? In tribulation. <laughs> when last were you joyful? He says here, exceedingly Exceeding. joyful in tribulation. He didn't deny there was tribulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't dispute there were trials. Mm -hmm. But what is your attitude in mm -hmm. it? Where is your praise? Mm -hmm. I have a message called, don't let, let the, the devil, devil steal, steal your, your praise. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what's coming against you, right. have that attitude of joy and praise. Declare the goodness of God mm -hmm. knowing, knowing, knowing. knowing. <laughs> and you know before Paul, the trial comes. Paul there didn't go getting his revelation in, in the, the middle, middle of the trial of oh. the tribulation. Oh, that has been a problem. <laughs> he was set apart yeah. and had that revelation first. Yeah. And he grew, of course. Mm -hmm. But when the tribulation and the trial came, he could smile exceedingly joyful. Mm. He says here, boasting in infirmities, mm. taking pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> in trials and tribulations. Mm. Child of God. When you are courageous, mm. you count it all joy. When you are courageous, you will not be that person who will be saying, Oh, why me? Mm -hmm. Am I the one that killed mm. Jesus? <laughs> what really happened here? <laughs> Lord, why me? What have I done? Your believer will ask, Where is my God? God has no <laughs> complex. God has nothing to prove. Right. God is God, whether you live in victory mm. or you live in failure. So don't go blackmailing God with, Oh, Lord, when this happens to me, my family members, they know I've been serving you. And they will say, where is, where your, is God? your God? God will say, I'm still so, where I have been. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> on the throne. Seated high on the throne. And you're meant to be seated, seated together with, with me Christ, yeah. in the heavenly places right. far, far above, above 
all of these tribulations and trials to quit whining, mm. quit griping, mm. rise up and be courageous. Amen. And in the midst of the mess, count it all oh, joy, joy. and say, I am well able to come through this Thank you, because Jesus. the greater Amen. one lives in me. I am, or are you no longer born of God? Mm. I am born of God. Mm. And it's either God is a liar or I'm the one lying here. Mm. The Bible says whatsoever, whosoever born is born of God, God. overcomes the world. Yeah. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, child of God. When you are courageous, when you have the overcomer's disposition, mm. you have the disposition of joy, mm. praise in the midst of whatever yeah. circumstance yeah. comes your way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, thank you for truth. That is so liberating. Thank you. Thank you for courage yeah. rising up in your people. I see people rising up yeah. and going back to places where they failed before. Amen. And saying, nah, 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 I'm going right back. Mm. You're not just the God of a second chance. Mm. You're the God of another chance. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And victory begins to rise up from within them. Mm. Because they understand now. Yes. Revelation has come. Yes. The eyes of their understanding have been enlightened. And they know that they are well able to overcome regardless yeah. of what comes against them. Amen. We give you praise, Thank Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. This March. Get ready. For the time of maturity has come. Makaira Moments, a two-edged sword teaching seminar with Pastor Nkechi Ene. You've got to understand that your name is in the finished job report of Jesus. When he said it is finished, he referred to you. On Thursday the 19th, Friday the 20th, and Sunday the 22nd of March 2020 at 6 p.m. on Thursday and Friday and 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday at the Carpenters Church Greenville off Ajipo Iwafe Road Mile for Rumeme Port Harcourt. We'll take you this way till you get to the school of Christ where you learn that you can only be justified by faith and the law itself cannot justify you. Makaira moments. You don't want to miss this.